Hey everybody, Great Good Mining here. My Bitaxe Gamma 601 keeps overheating and I've got a few solutions I'm gonna try out today to try and prevent that. So I'm gonna be installing what's called a jet pack. I don't know if you guys saw my video recently where I put together an avoid bit rack and he sent me this thing called a jet pack along with it. And it's basically a very handy piece that can attach a fan to the back of the bed axe. And I bought a Noctua fan that has a splitter on it. I'm gonna install a fan front and back to help cool down the ASIC temperatures and the voltage uh, regulator temperature. Also, I bought a new heat sink and I got some fresh thermal paste I'm gonna slap on here. I bought this from Solo Satoshi. Um, I do have a discount code for a void bits cooling rack and like mounting rack option. Um, so check out the description for that. I don't have any like discount code for Solo Satoshi. I just saw this um, heat sink and I thought it was kind of cool. So I wanted to try it out. So not like affiliated, not sponsored or anything like that. But um, I just wanted to try some cooling solutions for this bit axe because I'm tired of it overheating. I want to be able to get more out of it. I haven't really been able to do even like the standard um, like clocks and voltages on this thing. So I'm going to see what I can do with it today. I'm going to tinker with it. So if you want to check out how my results turn out with this new heat sink with some fresh thermal paste with the avoid bit jet pack with two fans, dual fans, then let's go ahead and go right into the video. So I'm gonna show you how to take this fan off. I was doing some testing. It will remove just like the stock fan. I was just trying to test fit things um, for this video. So don't worry, process is the same. We're gonna remove the Noctua fan. Now there's two different Noctua fans that I know of that will fit this. One, the one that I have, the one that I'm trying out, I'll leave a link to it in the description of the video. This is, um, like specifically it says it's good for like going over dense fins like this. So there's other fans. I'll leave both actually in the description. You can pick which one you want to try to use out. One has a higher volume of airflow. It's like more capable of moving higher volume of airflow, but this is supposed to have like higher static pressure um, over like a smaller area like these fins. So I wanted to try this fan. You guys let me know, do you have a certain fan you're using on your Gamma 601? Uh, how's it working out for you? You know, comment in the description if you're using something different. So all we're doing is removing these screws that are holding this to the heat sink. Once you've got the fan removed, we're gonna flip it over. There's some clips that you'll see. Let me see if I can get the zoomed in here. One, two, three, four, and we're gonna squeeze those with some needle nose pliers and just um, pull the heat sink off the front. So they're very um, small plastic pieces, as you can see, I'm gonna try to zoom in here with some lighting. My lighting's bad, sorry, the light's behind me. But you can see it right there. You're gonna squeeze that clip right there, and there's four of them, you're gonna remove the heat sink. We're gonna go ahead and get the rubbing alcohol out and you know, probably don't even need it because it's just one chip, but I'm gonna go ahead and use some rubbing alcohol to get the old thermal paste off. Just kind of gently wipe it off with a paper towel. And this is the thermal paste that they gave me in the kit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It was only a couple bucks and the thermal paste that I used doing different tests for this, it's, um. I was using Arctic MX-6, like I've used that on my Caspa A6. It worked really well, but it had been sitting in the garage for quite a long time. So I wanted fresh thermal paste, and for a couple bucks, um, they'll ship you a small amount. You know, it's all you need really for this small chip. So just apply the thermal paste. I mean, I guess I'm gonna put a little bit more than I normally would, because it should just like overflow off the sides. It's probably way too much. You guys tell me, how do you like to put your thermal paste on? Now, the jetpack that I was telling you guys about, I've already um, installed like the stock fan into the back of this. And I'll just show you guys real quick, it's super easy. So this is the stock fan that came with the bit axe. And I'm gonna go ahead and just show you real quick how to install it in there. 
you seriously just slide it in and then this little plastic cover pops on the front. Like I said, check out that video I did where I built the avoid bit, bit axe rack. Here's the Solo Satoshi uh, new heatsink and that's compared to the old heatsink and it doesn't look like much bigger or anything but you can see there's a ton of smaller pins um, so I'm hoping that that extra surface area and maybe higher quality aluminum uh, might help we'll see um, I wanted to try a couple different things at once to see if we could get the temps down so it should be pretty easy um, now that we've got the thermal paste on there and cleaned up I should be able to just snap this in there it's got these um, same style clips that retain it so I'm gonna go ahead and snap it in hopefully it just pops in yeah I'm just gonna do it like a staggered close to a star pattern as you can so um, right away what I'll say is this feels more solid on here like uh, it's hard to describe but when I was taking this off and putting it on I could kind of feel it like wobbling around really loose and um, it just didn't seem like I mean I'm sure the contact was fine like I can see the thermal paste was smushed down but it just feels like more solid like it just feels like it's not wiggling around as much so I'm hoping that better contact with the chip uh, and a bit like more fins will help improve the cooling it's supposed to that's what it's designed to do so I'm gonna go ahead and screw this back down just like you guys saw me unscrew it I'm not gonna show it on camera uh, we'll skip to the next step uh, after I screw this fan down of installing this back in the rack and plugging the fans in um, the Noctua fan does come with a splitter and I've already tested it it does work with the Noctua fan and the stock fan both connected at the same time so it should hopefully help cool down those temperatures. Let's go ahead and get this fan uh, reinstalled real quick and we'll skip the next step. Got the fan mounted back on the front and then I've just kind of got the splitter just fed through the back here and that way once we mount this back on the rack I'll be able to plug in the jet pack. You guys will see what I mean once I mount it back on that rack. So let's go ahead and plug in the splitter. There should be plenty of slack on the wires. I already tested it. There we go. Okay. All right, so that should be enough slack for me to plug in the fan once we put this back on the rack. All right, I'm going to try to do this one-handed. <laughs> I've already plugged in the jetpack fan on the back so it can kind of dangle over the top. And then it just, can you see right there, very easy, clicks into place. And then the jetpack snaps on to the back and I won't be able to do this one-handed um, you guys check out my other video where I did the avoid bit rack and uh, you'll see more clearly how I attach the jetpack to the back it just clicks on there and then I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and then we will let it run for a little while and we'll see what the temps look like in the computer I gotta say these results are pretty incredible Sorry to interrupt your video, but a quick word from the sponsor of the video, Terra Hosting. Terra Hosting is a white glove hosting service with 99% average uptime, and that is before they moved to their brand new, freshly built, state-of-the-art facility in Indiana that will be using AI to keep track of your mining equipment to make sure you have the best uptime in the industry, and they do not do curtailment. They are a white glove hosting service. I can attest to this because I have been hosting with them for years. So check out Terra Hosting, use the link in the description. It will take you directly to a form where you can fill out what you're interested in sending to them. If you're interested in purchasing from them, you can go to Terra Hashes. They also have a website for selling mining equipment that you can have shipped directly to Terra Hosting. And I have a discount code. I'll show it on the screen. Use that discount code. Use the links in the description to check out Terra Hashes and Terra Hosting. Thanks for listening. And now let's get back to your video. I was able to get the ASIC temperature down from like you saw around 71 degrees Celsius down to like 59 to 60 degrees Celsius voltage regulator temperature is like 47 and the fan speeds only at 44 percent before my fan speed was like at a hundred percent almost all the time it could never keep up so it seems like the combination of the jet pack on the back and the new uh, fins on the, the new heatsink are giving me incredible results. I'll show you guys where my clocks were at and where they've been stuck at for a long time. I was never able to go over this 
Yeah, frequency was 400 and core voltage 1000. So I was never able to like overclock this. I was never even able to um, achieve default settings. Uh, my hash rate was like always a little bit lower. Uh, for some reason, I've had trouble with this, this thing overheating a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and start eking up these settings and we'll see how it goes. I'm mining with this bit axe and I'm sending the balance straight to my tangent wallet from the pool. So if I ever wake up and I have a 3.125 Bitcoin block sitting in my tangent wallet, I'll let you guys know. But for now, in the meantime, you can get a stackable discount. It's pretty cool. Um, tangent has 10% off with my discount code greater good. That's always like that. You can use the link in the description. It'll automatically apply the discount code. If not, just make sure you punch in greater good for 10% off. But right now it's stackable. For an extra 5% off, punch in discount code FRIENDS. That way you get a total of 15% off if you guys are looking for a tangent wallet. So I've been running this for several days. I tried all kinds of combinations of different ASIC frequency, different voltages, and I was able to get like higher hash rate. I was able to overclock it. I was able to get like 1.35, 1.45 terahash per second, but it did destabilize to some extent. I left it overnight one day and I checked on it the next morning it had overheated at some point in the night and sh like shut itself down so i just don't want to deal with that i don't want it to be overclocked where i have to check on it i want it to run nice and steady and be very happy where i don't have to look at this thing and i don't have to check on it i want it to just run in the background like a little lottery miner that i just know will run and then maybe one day i'll hit a block so here's where my temperatures are and i'll show you the frequency and voltage in a second 64 degrees celsius ASIC temperature, voltage regulator temperature 51. Fans are currently at 100% because it's kind of hot in this room. This equipment is all like clustered together on the shelf behind me. So I've got my like um, AI Nosana rig running over there, um, several different lottery miners. So the, you know, the corner is a little warmer than usual and this room is a little warmer than usual because I got mining equipment in it. But anyway, right now this thing is running perfectly fine. Let me show you my settings. Frequency is default. Core voltage is a little less than default 1100. And I am happy with this because I know this will run for days and days and days without any issue. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it just like this. Very happy with the results with the avoid bit rack, with the jet pack, with the Noctua fan, with the Solo Satoshi new heatsink. It is working perfectly for my purposes. So check out the links in the description. I'll leave them all in there if you guys want to do the same thing. Amazon links, all that stuff. And I hope the video was helpful to you. If it was, hit the like button. It helps more than you guys know. Check out some of my other videos. I've got tons of crypto mining content. And subscribe to the channel if you like that kind of thing. Last but not least, don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.